machinery here from all over the country to build this bottling line. The twist rinsers from 7-Up, the filler was in a Budweiser plant. We have the talent here to rebuild this stuff and make it work, so we'd rebuild it and fit it in line. Basically for us it was a financial thing, but uh, when you think that you didn't have to run a, a coal plant for a few hours back east to actually make the machine, we could reuse it. So we took this system from a little town in, in Bavaria called uh, Stoffelstein, where they were going to cut them up for scrap. They're beautiful old vessels. It just turned out that we wound up recycling. But as we built this place, we've done just about everything with some kind of uh, sustainability in mind. We create energy recovery from steam. We're boiling off water. We're boiling off volume. This steam is not really recapturable. As you can see, it's not... There's not really a lot of energy to be recaptured there. This is the one that's going to be important. This is the condensate that comes off of the condensate return vessel down there. We want to recover that heat from that. We can run a turbine here maybe. We can convert the BTUs into hot water. This is going to be an excellent place to recover several million BTUs per day. So that's, that's the next project. This is the underbelly of the brew house. The flume that you see coming out of the roof is right here. So what we want to do is recapture this heat right here. It's going to be 290 degrees right here as it enters that. What we want to do is recover this energy through means of a heat exchanger, or we can put a turbine in there and turn something. Probably a heat exchanger would be the best way, because then we can preheat water for the next mash. And we already do that, which I'll show you next door. You know, at every turn, we're looking for ways to, to conserve. Because the bottom line is, is we don't have to charge as much for the beer if it doesn't cost as, as much to make it. Now after the wort is boiled, then it's sent up to the whirlpool upstairs. And it's sent back down here through the hot back or directly through the heat exchanger. It's going to come over here at about 210 degrees. And what we want to do is run cold water by it, or actually ambient temperature water from our tank farm. So that water goes that way, the wort goes this way, and we want to get that wort down to about 70 degrees is the temperature that we put it into the fermentation tanks at. That makes the, the other water going by at 170 degrees. We put it directly in here, we save it into the hot liquor tank, and now for every brew, just by, by doing a heat exchange, now we've already preheated the water for the next mash in. So you'll notice a big trench through the middle of the floor. Typically in a lot of brewing or manufacturing applications that make things out of liquid, about two thirds of the water used is for washdown. All the washdown water is collected, sent through a weir over here where we screen out a lot of the solids and that kind of thing. But you can see all the solids in that water. So what we want to do is just try to put the water as, as clear as we can into the pond. And then we start a process down here in these two tanks so that Second tank fills up, it's aerated continually, and then when that tank is full, then it flows down into the first pond. So the idea is just to begin the breaking down process there. Uh, from there, then it comes over into the second pond. From the second pond here, it's broken down further, and you could take this water and actually irrigate with it. And if you got a wind generator uh, that's probably producing oxygen, is pumping yeah, oxygen? Yeah, exactly. It's uh, roughly equivalent to about a quarter horse motor. Sure. Uh, so what we're going to do is buy about three or four more of those and have them all up and down here. As you can see, it's just pretty windy. At the wastewater treatment that they have here, which is required by law, they're using three five horsepower pumps in this pond, and, and they're running 24 hours a day. That's an awful lot of electricity. That, that's equivalent to several houses worth of electricity every day. It's why they say if beer were easy to make, they'd call it wine. electricity via the solar panels. So what we have are 768 panels between here and this other array. These panels are 187 watts a piece, which total about a little over 146,000 watts. This wound up being about an $825,000 project. But with PG&E, state, federal incentives, all the rebates, everything was really coming together and it just really made it time to do it. On a good day, we get about two-fifths of our energy. And we've seen this in a reduction of our electric bill from $9,000 to about $5,000 in the summertime, which is substantial. What kind of uh, payback period would you be looking at then? I think that we figured it was going to be about five years by the time everything was all said and done. We didn't have enough surface here. As you can see, we need something facing the sun. So this building was oriented perfectly, but we had to figure out a way to get the other 30 kilowatts. So, well, this is uh, another 176 panels over here, so it was about a fifth of this. Yeah. Dual use. Uh, Dual use, yeah. 
but we could have put them on this the ground and then not parked under it, but actually this made a nice spot for everybody who's important here to have their car. Another way that we've conserved electricity, refrigeration is a really important issue in a brewery. Refrigeration is really important and it can also be very expensive. This is a 130 ton unit. It has four 35 horse compressors in it. And so if everything's all running at once or relying on people to turn them on and off, uh, it's gonna be very expensive. So what we have are uh, 12 stages with this unit, starting with one compressor unloaded all the way to all the compressors on and loaded. This would probably run a block of houses, including microwaves and computers. So when it's cold, first thing in the morning, winter time, there's not a lot of ambient heat to overcome. We're only drawing maybe 20 or 30 amps instead of the whole 200. Ideally, the more mass you have in here, the more efficient the cooling is gonna be. Air is really inefficient. By putting the plywood in between, we found that we could go to just three pallets high, and that means we've now got a third more volume out of this, out of this room. It's more mass, so it's more efficient cooling. As far as recycling, all our spent grain, any of the waste in that type is recycled and collected. Make about 40,000 pounds of this a week or something? It's about 60,000. It's a great animal feed that doesn't go to waste. These tanks collect all our spent yeast, all the used yeast. We give it to a local rancher and he feeds it to his dirt. It's 10% calcium, 10% nitrogen, 8% phosphorus and potassium. Incredibly great resource for the soil to remineralize the soil.